A couple of months ago or whenever, this jabroni, Michael Knowles, was in a bit of hot water. People were saying that he called for a literal, actual genocide of transgender people. A claim he vociferously denied. He went so far as to threaten news outlets with a big fat libel lawsuit if they didn't retract their reporting on the thing that he said out loud. I know I'm a little behind on this, this is old news at this point, but I wanted to do a bit of a deeper dive into this one and investigate if there's any truth to the claim that Michael Knowles from the Daily Wire called for a literal actual genocide of trans people out loud with his mouth. So let's take a look at the evidence and weigh the likelihood, because you know, it's not like we, we can just get a videotape of him saying it in front of a big crowd of clapping people. Shut up. Shut up, me. D li listen, this video is it's chock full of content, okay? And it's not going to trigger you because guess what? I'm going to warn you about it right now. It's got all of this stuff in it, all of this stuff here. For the, for, from this point on, you're going to have to listen to like some wiener be like, oh, transgenderism must be eradicated. And by the way, transgenderism, not even a word, not even a thing. Shut up, Michael Knowles. And you know me, I'm not a very serious person. But it, maybe this one is going to get to you a little bit and that, you know, I get, you know, exercise some caution here. Viewer discretion is advised. If you don't want to watch the video, that's fine. Go do something else. When was the last time you played Sonic 3 and Knuckles? That's a great game. Taxi. There can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. It is all or nothing. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he did. That was easy because uh, it, was, it was that stuff. Like, like the thing he is saying here is that. I mean, it's true that he didn't say the words, hey, everybody, let's get together, do a big time genocide. I, I got my genocide and suit all picked out. We can make an afternoon of it. Sure. Didn't say that. I'll, I'll grant you that much. It's just that, you know, I, I don't know if there's any other reasonable way to read the sentence, the eradication of transgenderism from public life to mean anything other than the removal of transgender people from public life. Like how else would one accomplish such a thing? I mean, don't get me wrong. There are lots of unreasonable ways to interpret it. Maybe he was suffering from some sort of aphasia. Maybe an evil wizard was puppeteering his body and he didn't say any of that. Maybe he speaks a language that sounds identical to English, but all of the words have the opposite meaning, like in the bizarro world. But you know, if we restrict ourselves to what could have actually happened, yeah, he did, he did call for genocide, yes. If uh, eradicating transgenderism from public life means that nobody is allowed to live publicly as anything other than the gender assigned to them at birth, which he will go on to say later in this video, that requires one of three things to be done about people who have already transitioned. Either they are forcibly detransitioned, rounded up and put into concentration camps, or murdered. Now, I don't think I need to explain why rounding categories of human being up and putting them in concentration camps or murdering them is genocide. I know that the definition of genocide is up for debate among various types of people who, for one reason or another, want to downplay the severity of the genocides the guys they liked did. Here's an example of what that might look like. For centuries, he was universally admired as a hero. Now, he's widely considered to be a despoiler of paradise, an enslaver, and a genocidal maniac. I'm talking, of course, about Christopher Columbus. Is he a hero or a villain? The truth is complicated. But you know, there's really no definition where one could round up a minority group into a concentration camp and or murder camp without being classified as a genocide. Let's, I think we can agree on that much, right? So like, let's set that aside. Let us assume he wasn't saying out loud that he would want anything quite so obvious. So we will charitably assume he is insinuating a sort of forcible detransition scenario. And that itself is unfathomably cruel, it's torture, uh, and it's also still genocide, Mikey. The same way that it would be genocide to attempt to wipe out a religion by making it illegal. Historically, that has, you know, been a major component of the worst genocides in history. Like, you need not kill everybody in order for something to be a genocide. But the version you propose also necessitates, like, compulsory surgery, which you know, 
that's not great. That that would that seems pretty bad. And again, you know, people don't need to die for this to be a genocidal act, but uh, a lot would, either from suicide or from refusing to comply with law enforcement's attempt to police their gender identity. But you know, like okay, thought experiment. Let's say we lived in a fantasy world where everyone went along with it and was okay with it. That that would still be a genocide. Like to eradicate the culture of a minority group is, is still genocide even if they accept it under penalty of death or imprisonment, you know? So like, yeah, he did. He did. He did call for genocide. Uh, again, here's him doing it. Transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. See, I'm not, I'm not making this up. He, it, it, the vi it's in the video. If you're part of my audience, you likely already know this. I'm preaching to the converted a little. I'm not here to prove that Knowles advocated genocide. As I have demonstrated, that doesn't require proving. He did. We all saw him do it. He did it on a big stage in front of a lot of people. That's actually not up for debate. It's a matter of public record. And if anyone is interested in suing me about that, my email address is thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com. No, what I'd like to talk about is the way that he reacted to being criticized for the things he said what that says in turn about our modern media ecosystem, and just how easy it is to dodge accountability by disappearing into an ink cloud of bad faith bullshit, like some sort of bullshit squid. How the far right have fractured consensus reality so completely that we can no longer agree on something as simple as, no, you said the thing that you just said. And crucially, how I think we should respond when things like this happen. So, how did tricky little Mike wriggle his way out of this one? Here he is explaining how he couldn't possibly be talking about a genocide. They said that I was calling for the extermination of transgender people. They said I was calling for a genocide against, I said, what? I must have missed that part of my show. When did I, did I say that? Transgenderism must be eradicated. One, I don't know how you could have a genocide of transgender people because genocide refers to genes. It refers to genetics. It refers to biology. And the whole point of transgenderism is that it has nothing to do with biology. That's what the transgender activists say. They say, forget about biological sex. My gender expression doesn't have to have anything to do with my biological sex. Okay, well then there can't be a genocide. That refers to genetics. All of that is wrong. And, and I will show you why. Uh, but it is worth pointing out that proving it wrong is pointless because he's not stupid enough to believe it. But for the record, the geno in genocide does not refer to genes. They're from the same root word, genos, which if he had bothered to Google, he would have read, quote, the word genos was widely and variously used in Greek of all periods to denote species, genus, sort, category, birth, kin, race, lineage, family, generation, posterity, etc. It's a word that means a sort, a grouping, a type of guy. He's wrong. It, it, it full stop. And I don't think he cares. He knew what he was doing here. This is a style of argumentation that I would like to dub liberal bait. You see, liberals love to argue about things like this, about matters of technicality and specific rules and what words mean and dates and times. They love to correct basic factual errors in a statement, and he's counting on them to focus on that and ignore the horrible monstrous thing he actually means. It's a method of controlling the narrative, making your opponents look like pedants rather than people with meaningful critique. Because to the average person, engaging with shit like what the etymology of the word genocide is just comes across as petty. I believe he has staked his claim on this deliberate factual error in order to elicit such a response. Because let's face it, part of the appeal of political debate for many liberals, not all, many, is getting to feel a little superior, getting to feel like they're the adult in the room. And regardless of whether or not that feeling is justified, it has the side effect of absolutely pissing off anyone who doesn't already agree with liberals. It's, it's just some bullshit he made up. It's nothing. We can summarily dismiss his entire argument on that basis. Like all of it is based on that, right? But to do so would be to take the bait. It would be to concede that if it were true that genocide referred to genetics or biology or whatever, the rest of his argument and all of the emotionally charged nonsense within would be reasonable. The definition and etymology of words is not persuasive, it's not compelling. And wasting time with that while he fear mongers about the dangerous transes coming to steal your dick gives him what he wants. Really take a look at the things he is saying without saying here. 
ignore that he is wrong for a second, and pay attention to what motivates his motivated reasoning. How he is wrong and why. And not just to the words, but like, to the emotional picture he is painting. Hey, what, what the fuck do you mean that trans people say, forget about biological sex? How does that make any sense at all? Do you know what a trans person is, Michael Knowles of The Daily Wire? Trans people tend to be a lot more keenly aware of their biological sex than most people. Michael, often they put a lot of work into physically changing it. Like, you'd have to be aware of it to do that. It is central to their experience of the world in ways that it is often not for cis people. Putting that aside, your argument here is that since any trans person who might disagree with you does not believe that this is a genetics issue, you therefore could not be calling for genocide, but also it actually is a genetics issue, so... Seems like you could have been, Michael. Seems like the argument you're attempting to make here is that it absolutely is genocide, but if your opponents admitted that, they'd have to admit there's some kind of biological basis to gender, which still puts you in the, you know, category of someone who advocated genocide. And even if we put all of that aside, I don't know if saying that you wish to perform what would otherwise be a genocide on people who the term does not technically apply to is a meaningful moral distinction. The reason genocide is wrong isn't because of who it's done to. It is, in principle, wrong to exterminate groups of people, either physically or by forcibly conforming them to some other standard of being, to which I'm sure he might respond. But furthermore, nobody is calling to exterminate anybody because the other problem with that statement is that transgender people is not a real ontological category. It's not a legitimate category of being. Okay, um, that's weird. That's a weird way to respond to the claim that you are advocating mass murder. If someone accused me of exterminationism, I would say, what the hell are you talking about? I, I don't want to kill anybody. I don't want to wipe out any cultures. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not a hateful person. I don't want to do that. But Knowles instead makes it clear that if he were exterminating people, which he is not, but if he were, you know, it, it would just be a series of individuals who don't who, who don't cohere into a group. So you can't call you can't call that exterminationism. It's a perfectly innocent series of discrete exterminations. Nobody is saying we want to eliminate a legitimate ontological category here. Just a bunch of people. What a relief. Do you see the bait inherent to this though? Because like, that's not how you do an ontology. <laughs> He is not arguing here that transgender people are not a real ontological category. Those words, in that order, make no sense. He's arguing that they are ontologically miscategorized. There are people who think that they're the wrong sex, but they're mistaken. They're, they're laboring under a delusion. And so we need to correct that delusion. Even if we accept his extremely bigoted definition of trans people here, that they are people who labor under a delusion that they're the wrong sex, which is obviously wrong in several different ways, ontologically, that's still a category of person. Otherwise, there could not be a word to refer to such people. Being an ontological category does not legitimize or delegitimize ideas that people within that category might possess. Flat earthers are ontologically a category of person. They're people that believe the earth is flat, even if they're incorrect. Okay, sure, right? But here, here's the important thing you absolutely need to understand. This is critical. Um, neither he, nor I, nor you, nor anyone cares. In my opinion, this is, once again, a deliberate error to goad people into long-winded discussions that dance around the topic being discussed, giving the impression that his critics are hoity-toity egghead busybodies, people more interested in discussing philosophy and high-minded hypotheticals than the real world. Because his statement that trans people are not a legitimate ontological category of being is, it's nonsense. It's, it's loop-de-loops and flibberty gibbets. It's highly distracting drivel. It's meant to distract you from the actually dangerous, actually hateful things he is saying, to wit. There are people who think that they're the wrong sex. They're, they're laboring under a delusion. And just tip to toe, that is nonsense. That is calculated misinformation. The only word in those sentences which is correct is people. 
Trans people do not, categorically, believe they are any sex in particular. There is a wide spectrum of how sex and gender may intersect and what the relationship between them is for each individual, but to flatten the whole of the trans experience into people who are one thing but believe they are another shows an alarming poverty of thought and a complete lack of intellectual curiosity about the actual subject matter, again, I think deliberately. It assumes that there are two discrete, mutually exclusive sexes, that gender expression naturally neatly maps onto one or the other, and that to be trans means that one believes themselves to belong to the opposite category than he would think they do. All of these assumptions are demonstrably false. Please note here, I'm not hedging my words, I'm not saying in my opinion, he is factually wrong on all of these counts. Firstly, and most obviously, biological sex is not a binary and there is no scientific way to make it one. Any marker of biological sex which, supposedly, sorts people into one of two immutable, irreversible categories can be found flip-flopping in either category all across the natural world. Cis women can grow beards, they can have secret inner testicles and still give birth. Cis men have titties. Cis women supermodels can have Y chromosomes. A considerable portion of the population is born with non-standard genitalia and are often subject to corrective surgery, quote unquote, in order to give the impression that they from birth conformed to arbitrary designations, which demonstrates how harmful this assumption can be. I could go on, but any of these examples demonstrates the fluidity of these signifiers. There is, full stop, no way to neatly divide these two supposedly mutually exclusive categories without creating exceptions. The existence of such an exception, even if they were vanishingly rare, which they are not, means that sex is not a binary and it never could be. When we say sex in terms of like biological sex or like the sex of a person and not in terms of like the thing Michael Knowles will never have, we're referring to an abstraction, a useful generalization, not an ironclad set of rules each and every human body adheres to. Material reality does not conform itself to the language we use to describe it. So then, for example, if we say male, we're referring to a person who has enough of the typically male signifiers that they can be categorized thusly. There's no scientific reason, therefore, that if someone is born with one set of signifiers, but decides to change them later in life, that person should not be recategorized. Nor is there a reason why we can't use whatever words we want to describe a person anyway. Because words aren't real, they're just useful descriptors. Unless, of course, you had some sort of political agenda which made that deeply inconvenient. As for the second assumption, you are aware, Michael, that sex and gender expression are not the same thing. You said that trans people make this distinction earlier in this exact same video. That's what the transgender activists say. They say, forget about biological sex. My gender expression doesn't have to have anything to do with my biological sex. So like, you get it, you know, you understand the distinction being made here. Now, I suppose, if you want to be deliberately fucking dumb, and I know you do, you can pretend to dispute this. That, you know, it's just a thing, it's a wrong, untrue thing that the filthy transes believe. Transphobes love to pretend as though they dispute this, but they don't. It's actually a core belief of theirs. It is central to their understanding of the world and to their bigotry. The very fact that transphobes want to prescribe how someone may or may not behave based on their biological sex demonstrates that they agree with this principle. If you say something like a man pretending to be a woman or anything like that, you're accepting that there is a culturally constructed way to behave, dress, or look like a woman. If sex and gender were synonymous, there would not be any people who wish to perform any gendered expression other than that which corresponded to their sex. It could not happen, nor would anyone have reason to gatekeep which forms of expression corresponded to which sex, because that had just happened naturally. And this is where we're at as a society that I have to even explain this, but there is no gene responsible for like what clothes you wear or whether or not you wear makeup or what your name is, or what your haircut is, or any other gendered form of self-expression. It's not written in your bones. So like, they obviously agree then that sex and gender expression are not the same thing, as much as they pretend like they don't understand it, but their entire worldview is premised on the need to police how people present themselves. They wouldn't have to do that if they thought sex and gender expression were actually the same thing. They're just liars. Thirdly, he claims that being trans is a delusion, that trans people delusionally believe that they are the wrong sex. If that were actually what these people had a problem with, they wouldn't get so bent out of shape about drag shows, would they? Drag queens are often cis men who in no way think of themselves as women, just people putting on a show. And yet, weirdly, 
whenever transphobes start talking about trans people, they start throwing in drag queens in the mix as though that is relevant when they're just actors. Do you think that Tom Holland is delusional because he believes that he is Spider-Man? Obviously, I don't accept Nulls' framing here. I don't think that trans people who view themselves as their desired gender or sex are delusional. I would go so far as to call that bigoted horseshit. I think these people are correct in their assessment of themselves. Because who else would know but them? What I'm saying is, if this were simply a matter of correcting people's delusions as he sees them, why then would he go on to say, People said, well, what does it mean to ban transgenderism entirely? Well, it means that we return to the way that American society operated until approximately five minutes ago, when we said that men do not have a right to present themselves as women in public life. And women don't have a right to present themselves as men in public life. You have some limits on that. We have all sorts of limits on our speech and behavior. There are all sorts of words that I might want to yell and scream and say that I'm not allowed to yell and scream and say, both because of the mores and standards and norms in our culture, but also because of the law. That doesn't seem like it would be necessary if the impetus for this were to correct people's delusions. Typically, we don't curtail human rights based on whether or not we think the people exercising them are delusional. Like, let's take a, a clear cut example of a delusion. I don't think anyone could dispute, right? Like if it's like someone's in your office and they think that they are Napoleon Bonaparte, they're legally allowed to dress like Napoleon and call themselves Napoleon if they so choose. And even if I thought it was best for them to come out of that delusion, how, how do I ban that? Like you may only choose the name Napoleon if you can prove you do not believe yourself to be Napoleon. You may not wear a silly little hat or put your hand in your shirt. If someone did have that kind of genuine delusion, but otherwise lived a perfectly functional and healthy life, who cares? Like if a guy who works in your office thinks he's Napoleon and it doesn't affect his job performance and he's happy, but he gets really upset when you don't call him Napoleon, okay, fine, let him have it. What does it matter? Now again, I, I am not at all saying that that is analogous to the trans experience. It is not. Trans people are not delusional. I'm using this as an example of something I think we could all agree is a delusion. Because like, here, here's, here's the thing. It is not the job of mental health professionals to determine what is and what is not reality. For example, right? Like it's, um, it's not delusional to, to be wrong about things, right? Like you, Michael, are wrong about virtually everything you talk about. I wouldn't call you delusional, but I mean, that's kind of an edge case, I suppose. Cause like in order to be delusional, you have to believe things and I don't think you really believe in anything. Nonetheless, it is only the job of mental health professionals to treat a patient when delusions cause distress, not simply when they believe something is incorrect or irrational or we have judged it to be thus. That would actually be a, a terrifying amount of power to give someone. It also occurs to me in post that even if we did give mental health professionals that kind of authority, they tend to agree with trans people and not you, Michael. So like, You'd be the delusional one here. But like, again, this is all missing the fucking point, right? Because it's it's not a delusion. Being trans is not delusional. It, it's, it's how people see themselves. You're allowed to see yourself however you want. I see myself as funny. If you don't think I'm funny, that doesn't mean I'm delusional. We have a difference of opinion about whether or not I'm funny. And you're wrong. The whole delusion stink just distracts from the fact that once again, he is calling for a genocide here. Because I, I, I gotta ask you, Michael, I gotta ask in the world you're constructing here, if, if all you're saying is that people would simply voice their opposition to the validity of trans people, well, they already fucking do. And that's not stopping anybody. One is forced to conclude you are referring to some sort of government solution with laws and penalties, because to say people don't or should not have the right to do something means that you think that thing should be criminalized. The party of small government, everybody. And the question arises, uh, what happens to people who disobey? Because people would. Anytime anyone has attempted to do this, and they keep trying, people have. What do you do? I gotta tell you, Mike, if such a law were passed, I can tell you right now, I would disobey it. What happens? Do I go to jail, Michael? Would that not be kind of like rounding up a minority group and putting them in some sort of concentrated area? Like a like prison area or like a prison camp of some kind? 
Michael, I'm not calling for violence. I'm simply saying that the police should come arrest and detain people who make me uncomfortable. And just like imagine the totalitarian nightmare that would be required to enforce this. What does it even fucking mean to present yourself as a man or woman in public life? Which again, you know, assumes that there is a, like a socially constructed presentation that we accept as, as man or woman. If I wanna wear a dress, and, and high heels and makeup, and I call myself Sally Girl Town. But when the gender police ask me, I say that I'm a, I'm a man in possession of a wangus. Am I presenting as a woman? Must we institute laws about what clothes men and women may or may not wear? How do we enforce that? What about people who just naturally look androgynous? What about people who present themselves as a gender other than man or woman? What if a child dresses themselves as Spider-Man on Halloween? Clearly they're delusional. Or do these special rules about self-presentation only matter about gender for some unspecified reason? Again, what about people who've already transitioned? How do we know who's who? Does everybody need to submit a DNA test before buying clothes? Where exactly does the line between legitimate self-expression and presenting oneself as the wrong sex lie? Are men allowed to wear pink? To paint their nails? Are women allowed to get muscles? To wear flannel? Who decides what is male presentation and what is female presentation? What do they base that decision on? Michael, may I sit down to pee? Am I allowed to, legally? What are the piss rules in, in your gender dystopia? I'm confused. When you really look at what he's saying here, it is either you know, nonsense, word salad, the rantings of a buffoon and madman, or he's saying, let's get rid of all these dangerous queer people through violence. I'll leave to you which you think it is. Transgenderism ultimately is a lie. It's a deception. It's a fraud. Fraud is not protected by the First Amendment. Fraud is not a category protected by the principles of free speech. You have no right to fraud. What? Hold on. Wait a minute. I'm so confused because you're not being consistent here, Michael. I'm confused that because no, because I would expect a greater degree of consistency from your beliefs, Michael. Uh, a fraud? I thought it was a delusion. How can people be lying if they are delusional and believe what they are saying to be true? Even if we agreed that such people were incorrect about their own sense of self, it is not fraud to be incorrect, as you should well know as the world's most incorrect person. What's happening here is that he's using this fig leaf of compassion for trans people. Oh, I just see them as mentally ill, I don't have anything against them, right? But from the language he uses here, you can tell what he really thinks, that their gender expression is a deliberate, malicious deception. So if you're a man, and you dress up like a woman, and you rename yourself Sally, you have no right to go to the, the gym and go into the women's locker room and say, no, I'm really a woman. That's a fraud. That men want to see women in the changing room or whatever, and they can find no easier way to do that than changing every single thing about their entire life. You see, these poor, sick, delusional people who I have nothing but love and respect for are also dangerous sex criminals waiting to strike and devour your children. To put this another way, uh, one could, I think, describe it as a sort of, how do I put this? Um, like a continuous shifting of rhetorical focus where his enemies are at the same time too strong and too weak. Oh, sorry, sorry my, my mistake. I, I realize now I was actually paraphrasing Ur Fascism by Umberto Eco, which would imply that Michael Knowles is a fascist, but, uh, you know, he used to be a toddler, so that's not possible. That, so banning transgenderism, what that would mean is telling people who are a little confused that they need to get psychological help that they probably need to get a little bit of spiritual help, and they need to be normal. Be normal. That's my, I, I think that's my main political message these days. Oh, well, that kind of leaves us at an impasse, doesn't it? Because, like, if you tell me, hey, man, you need, to, you need to go to the doctor to get your gender fixed, I would respond, fuck you, you little freak. Why, why are you in my face, you little freak? Get, get away. Get away from me. Go to hell. Because, like, because, like, that, like, you're framing this as something that needs to change, right? But 
You're already doing that and I'm already telling you to go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. What exactly do you want to change here? And uh, I think the clue is the be normal part because for one thing, it's like, it's bait, right? Like he's goading people here. He wants us to dunk on him because it, it gives the impression that we're all just mean, self-satisfied assholes, which I am, of course, but not everyone who disagrees with him is, you know, but, it, but everyone is gonna be tempted to point out that obviously he's not being normal. He, he's not being a normal guy here. He's being a, a weird little guy. It's weird loser behavior to get so bent out of shape about how other people choose to live their lives. And he's using justifications for this, like whether or not someone is a legitimate ontological category. And that's not a normal guy thing to do. He's being a weird little creep and we can all see that. And it is tempting to just point and laugh about the irony. But you know, that's debate, right? Cause like the thing he's saying here, like, 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 what he's actually saying is fucking hideous, like bloodthirsty monster shit. Just pointing and laughing and makes it seem like the issue is that he's a weird little goblin man. When that's irrelevant, the actual issue is that he's, he's doing stochastic terrorism. Just be normal. Who is normal? Mike? Who decides? Based on the context, it kind of seems like what you're saying here is that everyone should conform to the standards that you find acceptable. The world and everyone within it should bend themselves to your whims. That you, or you know, people like you, should be allowed to dictate the acceptable parameters of human diversity. That people who deviate from your expectations represent a sort of corrosive influence. That normalcy is not something which emerges naturally, but rather a set of standards decided upon and cultivated by some sort of elite societal power structure, which must be enforced on people against their will if necessary. That your way is the superior one, the true one, the, the normal one. And thus, you have the inherent right to suppress or eliminate any other way of thinking, which is the type of logic that one might expect from, say, a genocidal proto-fascist. Let me be direct, actually. He is that. He is a genocidal proto-fascist, no matter how young he used to be. I know, I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes at me right now. It's kind of out of vogue to call people fascist. How 2016 of me. Some people think, oh, it's a, it's a word that's overused. You just, it's just an insult. It's just a pejorative. You're just, you're just name calling. And, and no, I, I believe this. I don't think that Michael Knowles is secretly a Nazi. I don't think he believes that Mussolini had it right. I don't think he's like behind closed doors giving Roman salutes and scheming with other fascists to institute a fascist state. In fact, you know, I don't really think he believes in anything. I think he's a deeply cynical fraud. I'm referring to the things he claims to believe, the things that he says out loud to his following. But again, even even if we assume all of that is genuine, like he's not he's not a crypto fascist, right? Like he, he isn't part of some fascist party. He isn't he, he isn't trying to smuggle fascism into the conversation covertly. He is, or, you know, presents himself publicly as a person who believes fascist things, who probably is not aware of that and would not agree with that characterization. But it is nonetheless the truth. And when we respond to this kind of talk, we have to be really careful not to give them a fucking inch. We cannot assume that they're trying to communicate a genuine belief in good faith. Fascists will gleefully poison discussion with deliberate nonsense designed to make the discourse impossible to navigate. They do not care about ideas. They do not care what you have to say. They have already decided that what they believe is inherently and unimpeachably correct, and any discussion they have with you is simply a means to achieve their goals, either by getting a platform to spread their message, or by intimidating you, or by using the discussion to sneak in little shitty assumptions alongside other bigger, flashier nonsense so the little assumption doesn't get questioned or pushed back on, and thus is normalized. No discussion with a fascist is ever between equals, and when you mistake it for one, when you think that they're just trying to express themselves, say what they believe, you take the bait. You can't argue with them. They don't argue. Facts don't matter to fascists. From their perspective, the truth is simply whatever they will it to be. The truth exists independently of any evidence or facts. It is not subject to being revised or re-examined upon any new discovery. It cannot be changed. They view truth fundamentally differently from you and I. Truth does not describe reality to a fascist. Truth is the ideological undercurrent with which they must guide reality. Because like, if they cared about truth, it would be pretty hard to be like, for example, a white supremacist. Seems pretty obvious if, if you're looking. Everybody seems roughly as good as everyone else. 
you know, if you if you care about the evidence. And it's hard to see that and not take the bait, right? Because to the rest of us, to everyone else on the political spectrum, even you dabbling little transphobes out there who aren't yet fully absorbed into the fascist hive mind, tend to care about what is true and what is not. Most people do, right? Like, facts matter to people because we live in the real world. We observe the real world and try to base our decisions around it. Now, obviously, we're not always great at that. We might disagree about what the facts are or what they mean, but all of us try, right? No, fascists don't. They don't live in the real world. They live in a fantasy, one they've constructed to make themselves feel superior, to feel like the natural inheritors of the world and everything within it. The normal people. The yardstick against which all other people are to be measured. That it's only a matter of time before they get everything they want and all they gotta do to get it is get rid of all the people standing in their way. The natural state of affairs is that they're in power, and the world is theirs for the taking. And the reason things aren't like that now is because some outside force has perverted this natural order. And all you gotta do to fix that, to return to the normal, natural order, is make everybody the same as you, to make them all normal. They think that there's a way that things should be, and would be, if people weren't changing it. That deviation from this perceived natural order, no matter how minute, flies in the face of the will of the universe, which of course exists solely to serve them. They understand this will intuitively, and they don't need to question it. Anything which does not align with their views is unnatural, and usually the expression of some grand conspiracy to pervert and destroy nature. The will of the enemy made manifest. You know, George Soros did it. Here's the thing that fascists don't understand about nature. Well, one of the things, they, they don't understand much about nature. Nature does not care what you consider normal. Nature does not care what you consider correct. Nature refuses to sort things into neat little categories for you to intuitively understand. It doesn't care if you're confused. It doesn't care if you're uncomfortable. Everything within nature is infinitely complex, and it resists the type of simplicity that fascists and other shallow thinkers want to impose upon it. Man, woman, healthy, sick, up, down, start, select. Nature does not and cannot make these distinctions. They are words we made up to describe patterns we found, and the universe has no interest in making sure everything within itself fits neatly into those patterns. Because, of course, nature does not possess a will. There is no state of nature to return to. There is no natural order to things. Nature, by definition, is always changing, diversifying, deviating, growing, and overcoming any limit and boundary you attempt to oppose upon it. It is always in a state of flux. Things cannot and will not stop changing. You can't control it. It will not obey you. And this is why they're so obsessed with being like big, strong boys, right? They need to be the big, strong boys so that they're stronger than anyone else who's trying to will reality into something they don't like. To, we gotta do eugenics and create master races and be big, hard, strong boys and crush any internal division so that we can be a united front because weakness, of course, traffics with the enemy. Weakness must not be tolerated because they're too scared the bad guys might win. They're superior, obviously. Obviously, that, that goes without saying. It's just that, you know, if they, if they stop being strong boys, then they lose on the stage of perpetual conflict that is human history. And you can try to impose your will on nature, the universe, the people within it. God knows, as many people have, it just, it just doesn't work. Like, no matter how hard you try, no matter how strong you get, all you'll do is cause a lot of hurt and death in the meantime, and ultimately, lose. That's the irony, really. Uh, fascists are everything that they themselves hate. They hate weakness, and they're weak. They hate deviance, and they're deviant. They hate cowardice, and they're the biggest cowards on the planet. They're scared of everything. It's loser shit for losers. It's a comforting fantasy for dweebs who don't feel satisfied with their lives and don't know what to do about it. It naturally appeals to the aggrieved, to the self-victimized, to entitled people who need a reason to justify why, if they're so fucking great, why can't they accomplish a goddamn thing? It must be the enemy, the trans person, the communists, the Jews. It's their fault I'm a failure. George Soros is why I can't get a girlfriend. People who lack the moral courage to ask themselves difficult questions about the world or intellectual curiosity to investigate anything. Because what if they discover they're wrong and they're not actually superior? They would prefer to live in the walled garden of their imagination, where nothing ever changes, where nothing ever challenges them. Their worldview could not withstand such a challenge, so they do not permit such a challenge to it. They do not permit new ideas, exceptions to their established rules, deviance from their prescribed norms. Things must be a certain way, and it falls on them to make it that way. 
Men must wear pants. Women must wear dresses. And nary the two shall meet. And that's simply how it has to be. That's the normal, natural state of affairs. And so, like, if something comes along that calls into question that fantasy world, their solution is, invariably, violence. To say that people do not have the right to think or speak these ways, and to thus impose their own arbitrary limits on people through force. That's the only way to impose a limit on people's behavior, because if you just say, no, you can't do that, okay, what are you going to do about it? If you say that someone does not have the right to something, that means you have the right to stop them, which means violence. Michael doesn't have to say out loud that he wants to violently eliminate anyone who refuses to conform to his preferred gender norms. He simply constructs a hypothetical where that is the only reasonable conclusion and then purposefully leaves it unsaid because he's a coward, a little punk ass coward diaper baby. If, as you said, men do not have a right to present themselves as women in public life, and women don't have a right to present themselves as men in public life, putting aside the bigotry inherent in classifying trans people this way, what is to be done about that? How is that to be enforced, if not through violence? How could it be? There's nothing else you could mean by that, so fuck your little word games, fuck your plausible deniability, everybody hears exactly what you're saying, or rather, what you're insinuating, because you're too chicken shit to say out loud. Nobody is fooled. This is how fascists operate. You can't point to the public record to dispute them. You can't even point out that they said a different thing earlier to dispute them. Because if any of those facts do not suit their interests, a fascist will not view them as true. Even if they themselves said them. Because why let a little thing like what actually happened dictate what is true? They believe they can bully reality into becoming whatever they want it to be. Whatever they think is natural and normal. And normal is, of course, whatever makes them most comfortable. But things that are normal do not require enforcing. You can't force people to be normal because whatever people are doing outside of that coercion is what normal is. So, Michael, if you want people to be normal, then, like, fuck off? Fuck off and they'll do it on their own? Go away, Michael? But if you'd prefer to watch a video from someone who should not fuck off, I invite you now to the eyeball zone. Hello and welcome to the eyeball zone. Here in the eyeball zone, boy, this one's a, a tough segue, isn't it? Because this video is about some fucked up stuff. But you know, the thing we do here is we, we put eyeballs on small bean content creators, just small beans, small. Hey, what happens if people like Michael Knowles win? Uh oh, that'd be a real problem. And I don't, I don't mean necessarily like full on, they're gonna kill everybody win. They're unlikely to get that far. But you know, they're gonna have some victories along the way. They're gonna, they're gonna wield institutional power to get people hurt and or killed. And what do we do about it when they do? Or for example, if they are doing. Would be another tense I could put that sentence in. In Righteous Anger, Transgenocide, Eden Knight, and Violent Games, Dead Domain provides what I believe to be the only acceptable answer to that question. Which is, of course, that trans people and their allies must be willing to use any and all means at their disposal to fight back against this type of violence, with force, if necessary. If you view that as hypocritical, well, I invite you to watch their video and ask yourself exactly what options do you think are available. To sit on the sidelines is to take a side and all of us will be judged by history. Dead Domain puts it better than I'm going to put it here, so why not go watch their video about it while you're listening to me? Do you have a small project you'd like to see featured here? Send no more than one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with pertinent details such as your pronouns and the word eyeballs somewhere in the subject line and perhaps you shall find yourself perpetually bound to the eyeball zone. Hey, you little so-and-sos, thanks for watching my little video. Gosh, I love it when my videos get watched and you did that, so thank you. Hey, hey. While you're here, when I like and subscribe, I bet that'd feel neat. Also, if you're so inclined and able to do so, why not go to patreon.com slash thoughtslime and give me money, which I will continue to use uh, funding my life and family, which and also this uh, these videos that I make. Or buy a shirt, of course. You could buy a shirt also at thoughtslimeshop.com. We got some new designs coming, including the one I was wearing in this video, but you couldn't see it because the mic was in the way. In conclusion, Michael Knowles should eat a big bowl of farts for lunch. <laughs>